We lift the name of Jesus on high this morning. We say, Blessed be his name alone in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we are looking at the word of God. The word of God is full of so many important questions that really demand our attention. The Lord knows how to ask questions. The one that knows it all, yet he asks man. Why does he ask us these questions? The Lord wants us to be sure that we really know the answer. He wants us, when God asks us a question in his word, he's calling our attention. Look at it very well. Understand the question and have the right answer. And so God asks us questions. And so he won this morning, we are looking at one of the very important questions that the Lord has asked in his word. And um, we are trusting him to give us a very clear understanding, clear answer to this awesome question that he has put across to us in his word. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16 from verse Matthew 16 verse 26 Matthew 16 the verse 26 yes. For what is a man's profit what for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking us a question this morning. The Lord, the one that knows it all. When, when God Almighty, who knows it all, asks a question. Beloved, what is in his heart that he is asking a question? An answer that he alone, he knows it all, yet he chooses to ask us that question. The Lord is asking this morning, what, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world? and lose his own soul is a question that jesus is asking this morning what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul he went further he said oh what will it what will a man give in exchange of his soul. Beloved, that's the question that the Almighty is asking us this morning. Maybe you have the answer. What will a man give in exchange of his soul? Beloved, this morning, there is something that is competing for the soul of man. That God Almighty is also asking what is man ready to give up his soul for? For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? First of all, this morning, what is your soul? What's your soul? Because the blood God Almighty He's talking about my soul. He's talking about your soul. He's talking about the soul of man. What is the soul of man? The soul of man is the eternal part of man. The soul of man is that part of man that never dies. The soul of man is that part that even when Mr. Body, Mr. Flesh dies, Mr. Soul is always alive. The soul of man is that one that goes further into eternity, either in heaven or in hell, and lives forever and ever. The soul of man 
is the real you. Man that never dies. This is the soul that is, lives inside the body. That houses the body. Your soul is who you truly are. The real you. Beloved, this morning, which aspect of your life is more important than your soul? Than your soul? Can you say your body is more important than your soul? Body falls down, dies. Body will decay. But Mr. Soul lives forever. And so your soul is more important than your body. Your soul is that aspect of you. Is that eternal part of you. Is that part of you that never dies. Is that part that appears before the judgment seat of Christ. That's the real you, your soul. Beloved, this morning, there is a battle for that soul. It's so precious that there is a battle for the soul. There is a battle for your soul. There is a battle for my soul. The kingdom of God loves me and you so much. That he created my soul, created your soul for himself and for eternity with him. But the kingdom of darkness is also battling for this most precious treasure that God has made. Hell is bargaining seriously for your soul. Why? To destroy it in hell. To burn it forever and ever. Hell knows that the soul never dies. And so hell is looking for company. Satan is looking for company. And so Satan is bargaining seriously for the soul of man. That's why this morning the Lord is asking, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Why is God asking? Because God has given us a free will. To decide who we want to give our soul to. Even though the soul belongs to him. In his love. In his wisdom. In his gentleness. He does not force the soul onto himself. He gives me and you the free will. To, to decide who we want to give our soul to. And beloved we are deciding every day. And that's why the Lord is asking us, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? He says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What does that tell us? It tells us that the value of the whole world is nothing compared to one's soul. That's the truth. Many of us, we don't know the value of our soul. If we know the value of our soul, we will treasure it very well. We are careless because we don't know the value of our soul. If we know that the value of one soul is more than all the treasures of the whole world, we will keep our soul more than we keep our money. We will keep our soul more than we keep our, uh, our, uh, 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 our business. And so this morning... May the Lord help us to know the value of our soul. Because the Lord is asking, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? That means that man is giving something in exchange of his soul. That's why God Almighty too is asking man. So what are you really trading for your soul? It's a dialogue. What are you really, beloved, what are... God is asking, what are you really trading in exchange for your soul? The all-wise God is asking man that question. He's asking me. He's asking you. Beloved, what is the condition of man's soul today? What is the condition of your soul? What is the condition of my own soul? We want to do that check this morning. Why? Because there is a great examination that all of us write every day. 
we want to know this exam. Please let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. Verse 8 to 9. Yes. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain mm. and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them mm. and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I say, But again for the soul of man. Did we hear that mm -hmm. message? I read it from NLT. He says something, he says, Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Beloved, there is something that man is giving in exchange of his soul. What is man giving in exchange of his soul? The Bible says, the, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and its glory. Beloved, the kingdom of this world and the glory of this world is what man is trading in exchange for his soul. So when God is asking a question, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The answer is that man is truly exchanging something for his soul. What is man exchanging for his soul? Man is exchanging the glory of this world, the things of this world. Man is giving it in exchange for his soul. Let's not forget that the value of one's soul is more than the treasures of this world. Yet man is doing bad business by trading a greater priceless value for the world this morning let's look at the scriptures very well that the devil takes each and every one of us to different points and he's bargaining with us through our thoughts through our desires, Satan is bargaining with us. Through the things that we love, Satan is bargaining with us. What is he bargaining for? Beloved, he is bargaining for souls. What is Satan giving in exchange for souls of men? The glory of the things of this world. The things of this world, man is giving it in exchange of his priceless soul. Love this morning, what am I, me, trading for my soul? What are you trading? What is that business negotiation that the devil is doing with you knowingly and unknowingly in order to get your soul? Beloved, this morning, once again, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? Beloved, are you trading your soul? The question is, what are you using to trade your soul? Or who are you selling your soul to? What is Satan using to buy your own soul? What's that business deal that Satan takes man to the peak and then he begins to negotiate with him? He said, bow down, worship me, and I will give you. Beloved. That the Holy Spirit revealed to us. Where are we bowing down to worship the devil in exchange of our soul? What are we worshipping? Many of us, we like the good things of this world. Are we worshipping the devil in exchange for our soul? We don't even need to ask far. Can't you see it happening? That man will do anything for money. The man will kill for money. Can't you see that a student will sleep with a professor for marks? Can't you see that business deals goes on every day? 
Are you not seeing that one that has to sleep with the boss to get the job? Can you not see the prostitute that sleeps around to get money? A lot of business is going on. But the great deception is that man does not know that what he is worshipping is the devil and what he is giving in exchange for it is his soul. The devil has no free gifts. He is buying souls. And how is he trading with it? Worship me and I will give you. He has no new tricks. He did it to Jesus. How much more me and you? The question we have this morning is that are we in verse 9? Are we in verse are we in verse um verse 10? Are we living in verse 10? Because in verse 10, Jesus said, Get out of here, Satan. Jesus told him, For the scripture says, You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away, and angels came and took care of him. Are we passing the test as Jesus passed? How did Jesus pass this test? Jesus looked at the devil and he said, get out. Are we telling the devil get out? When he brings his marketing strategies, our path, what is our answer? Or are we bowing down to worship him? Beloved, this morning, God is saying, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? Why? Because man is exchanging something for his soul every day, every minute, every hour. Man is trading something for his soul. Are we at verse 9? Are we at verse 10? Are we like Jesus who looks at Satan? And is able to say, get thee behind me. Are we like Jesus? Who knows that the one negotiating behind that business is Satan? Or do we just compromise? Thinking that all is well. Do we take time to see where that blessing, that, that thing we call the blessing, where it's coming from? Do we know the root? Are we really searching deep? Because Jesus saw the spirit behind that gift. The things of this world that we have in our possession. Do we see behind that gift? Who is behind that gift? Is it the spirit of God or is it the devil? We need to look deep. Because Jesus looked deep. And he addressed it very well and he said what? Get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus said you worship only God. And serve him alone. Beloved, are we worshiping only God? Or is there a plan B? At the corner of our lives. Is it only the living God we are serving? Or do we serve God? One leg. And the other leg is negotiating with the devil because we are saying God has delayed, so let me help myself. Is it one leg in and one leg out? Because we have Christians that still go to the herbalist. Beloved, this morning, are we passing our test? Are we following the example that Jesus laid for us? Because when Jesus finished addressing the devil, you know what happened to him? The Bible says then he went away. Then angels came and took care of him. That means that there is a divine care for that situation. There is no need to negotiate with the devil. Because when you resist the devil, angels will come and minister to that need. But before angel comes, many a times Satan will come to test you first. Satan will come to try to, to take you before your hour of testimony. Why? He's looking for souls. Beloved, has the devil captured your soul? We need to do a self-check this morning. 
and really know where our soul is so that we don't assume. We need to be sure that we have not sold our soul. Please, let's open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 to 17. <clears throat> The Bible says, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Please, can we read it from King James Version? First John chapter 2, from verse 15 to 17. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passed away, and the last thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Praise the, the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. That means that the world itself offers you something. Can't you see every day the latest this is coming out? The latest every day, latest phone is coming out. Latest clothing is coming out. Latest car is coming out. Latest husband is coming out. They are in levels now. Latest husband is coming out. The one that is already made. 2020 model. His car is 2020. His job is 2020 model. Package from hell. The world is always offering us something. Every day. You just bought new phone today. They tell you the next edition is out. You just bought this car. We are not yet in 2021. You will hear that the car of 2030 is out. The vision is always improving. The world offers us things. That's why Jesus said in his word, Godliness with contentment is great gain. That's why man, he has a big house. He's comfortable. Everything he, he needs is in that house. But because the world has brought out the latest model, he is no more satisfied with this new house. He has to build the one that looks like a bed in the air. Why? The world offers us new, new, new. And the Lord is telling us, that when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. This is the word of God. That means that when we love this world, when I love this world, I don't have the love of the Father. Then whose love do I have? Whose love do we have when we love this world? We have the love of the devil. Love is such a strong word. How can man use love for God and use love for the world? Love. What are we loving? What are we loving? What are we loving? At times the way we use the word love, we need to wait. Oh, I love this car. Kai, is that not too strong? What about saying I like the car? It's lighter than I love the car. 
Because we use these terms. And truly there are spirits behind these terms. Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And so this morning we say, I love God. And we also say, I love the world. Compare the world, compare God. And that love, look at the love we give to God. If we are supposed to love God rightly, the same way one man is loving God, that passion, that zeal, that's the same way another person is loving the world with that same zeal, with that same passion. That's just to tell you that it's not just the world, it's the devil behind it. And so we are either worshipping the almighty God or worshipping Satan by loving the things of this world. Because the Bible says that if we love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. He says, for the world offers only craving for physical pleasure. And craving for everything we see. And pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. Beloved, is that not what is happening every day? Craving. Craving. Craving for something. It's not your husband, another man's husband. Yeah, craving for it. The desires of our heart is misleading us. It doesn't belong to you. It's another man's wife. You are craving for it. The cravings of our hearts. You don't have it. It's not your job. You are craving to see how you will Drop that man by all means and take his position. Craving. Can't we see that in our time people are killing people? They kill a wife in order to take her husband. They kill a man in order to take his land. The cravings of our hearts. Why? Because we are loving the world. Whenever we channel love to the things of this world, it will begin to drive us. And so our cravings. You see a girl. Her friend is wearing a particular cloth. A particular jewelry. A particular shoe. She can't sleep all through the night. She is scheming, 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 scheming. Looking for how she too can get the money. To have the same thing her friend have or a better one. And so the next morning, what is she doing? Uh, she's sexing for it. She's sleeping around for it. She's going to bed with somebody that can give bed to her father in order to get that money to satisfy that cravings. So this is the daily life that man is living. And so in case we think, Oh, it's just a scripture. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? God knows the question he's asking. Because man is doing transaction every day. He says, A craving for everything we see. Let us iPhone. He has one. It's working. Nothing is wrong with it. What is the use of phone? Is it not for communication? Is it not text messages? Is it not video? You have that phone. It's working so well. You don't need another one. But because the world has offered the latest model, what happens? This one has to go. So that by all means you have the latest one. Competition. Ah, uh, His church is 1,000 capacity. Uh, what am I doing? At least I have to move on to 2,500. The next thing is that God say we should build him a temple. Why? The competition of our hearts. The craving of our hearts. You have seen that other pastor there. Yeah, he has a new car. His church members just bought him brand new one. What are your members doing? The craving of the heart. Indirect, he begins to push it. It's my birthday. Is this, did you see that? Begin to scheme and tread the soul for the things of the world. 
Beloved, it is happening every day. The same way the world market is trading, even in the realm of the spirit, the souls of men are facing transactions every day, every minute. There is buying and selling of goods. You know what the good is? Souls of men. The Lord is telling us this morning, this Law for the things of the world is not from the Father. It's not from the Father. It's not from the Father. For the world is fading away along with everything that people crave. This Bible is so complete. This world that man is killing himself for. This world that man is trading his soul for. Jesus is telling us this morning, in case you, you don't know, this world is fading away. It's rolling up. It's rolling up. It's fading away. Why will we do business where we know that the things there will not last forever? How can you give soul that is eternal for things that are temporal? Is it good business that a man will trade his soul and invest it in a world that is fading away. Beloved, why not invest in heaven? Where thieves don't reach. Where moth don't eat. Where are we trading our soul? Where are we making our investment? Is it on planet Earth? Where are we sowing? You are putting everything on Earth. When are you going to harvest it when the world finishes and goes away? Lord, let's be wise. Even the Bible says we should be as wise as serpents. The devil is so wise. We too, we need to be wise. Think, tell yourself the truth. Sit yourself down. Sit your soul down and negotiate. It's your soul. God gave it to you. Choose rightly who you give it to. Why? Because this world is passing away. It is bad business to give your soul in exchange for the world. All the things of the world. So, I'll check your soul. Check your soul this morning. Let's check our souls. Let's do a self-check this morning. Because in verse 16 of First John 2, the Bible says, According to the word of God, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, the pride of our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that the people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Anyone who does what pleases God will have his soul in eternity. He will live forever. Because when the soul goes to, 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 to hell, do you call it living? It's burning. It's dying, but it never dies. It's in agony. Is he enjoying anything? After enjoying the whole world, I'm going born in hell. How has it profited man? But God wants us to have a soul that lives forever in his kingdom. God wants us to have eternal life. And the only way we can have this is to do the will of God. That's what the Bible tells us. He said those that do the will of God, they will live forever. Beloved, this world will pass away. Your soul will never die. Your soul is either for heaven or for he hell. You are the one to decide where you want to take your soul to. But beloved, why not give it to Jesus? Why not love the Lord? Why not have the love of the Father in you? Why not do good business? Outsmart the devil. Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me. Why not do good transaction for your soul? We go back. To where we started from. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4. What can a man give in exchange of his soul? What will it profit a man 
if he gains the whole world and loses his soul. Beloved, have you gained the whole world? Can you gain the whole world? You gain the whole world, you mean you come and gain my own house too? So is it even possible to gain the whole world? And then lose his soul. Beloved, let the Holy Spirit sanctify our minds this morning. Let the Lord open our eyes this morning. May foolishness be washed out of us. May the Lord cleanse us truly. May he open our eyes to see as we ought to see. And cleanse our ears to hear as we really ought to hear. May the devil not make a fool of us. May the devil not lead us to do bad business. To give an endless, priceless treasure for trash. This morning, let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray for ourselves this morning. First of all, appreciate him for his love, for that great question. Appreciate him, appreciate him, appreciate him. Appreciate God that he's asking us that question. Father, I thank you. I give you praise this morning for the mighty questions you are asking. For this question you are asking, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? Father, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor because you are interested in my soul. You are interested in my soul. You are interested in my soul. Father, I give you praise in the name of Jesus. We are going to ask repent in any way that we have treaded our soul knowingly and unknowingly this morning let us bring repentance before god any way that we have treaded we are treading our soul my lord and i come to you in any way in any way that i have treading my soul father this morning knowingly and unknowingly i am asking you to have mercy on me have mercy on me have mercy on me have mercy on me lord have mercy what am i giving in exchange of my soul, deliver me today. Let us ask that the Lord will deliver us from bad transactions from committing our soul. My Lord and my God, deliver me. Deliver me from this bad transaction. Lord, that I will not trade my soul. That I will not trade my soul. I cast a fire. I cast the 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 fire. In the name of Jesus. What did Jesus tell the devil? He didn't keep quiet. He looked at Satan and he said, Get thee behind me. This morning we are going to resist the devil. Wherever he is trading for our soul, wherever he is holding our soul captive, we are going to rebuke him and we are going to set ourselves free. Let us pray. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Everything that Satan is holding my soul, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I resist you in the name of Jesus. I say, get thee behind me. Get thee behind me. Every Satan is that you are doing for my soul. I reject it today. I refuse it today. I nullify it today. I destroy it today. My father was in the head of the soul. My father was in the head of the soul. I am 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 the head of the soul. Satan knows what we like. The things that we let's ask the Lord to forgive us and purge us from the love of the world. Yes, that is the channel that Satan is using because he knows what we, our eyes see, what we hear, the things we like is what he's using to trade for our soul. And so let us ask the Lord we purge our desires, cleanse our hearts, that we will love what he loves, that we will desire what he desires. That we will not love the world and the things of this world. My God, I will go. Oh, I commit my heart to you. To all who are next to you. To all who are next to you. To all who are sanctified in this world. Take away the love of 
the Lord for me. Put the Lord on the Father in me. My cause of God is not a baba. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. The word of God clearly says that if we love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Let us pray that Father help me to love you with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my body, with my resources, with my everything. Jesus, help me to love you. Help me to love you more than any other thing. Help me to that the love of the Father be multiplied. In the name of Jesus, we are also praying that God will help us to do the will of the Father. That's the only way we will not trade our soul when we do the will of the Father. It was pray that the Lord will strengthen us to do His will. No matter the cost, Lord, help me to do Your will. Lord, help me to do Your will. Lord, help me to do Your will. Makota basete yeka da basanta. Makoro mo shete yeka sata ya. Now let's give Him thanks this morning. Let's give Him thanks this morning. Let's give Him thanks this morning. Blessed be Your name, Father. In Jesus. 